This old cross never gets you hard to carry. That old mountain's not all that steep. I can't reach the other side. Well, the river was not too deep when he's the bear. Preach on. 
Go ahead. I'm trying not to preach this morning. Preach on. Tell the truth, Pastor. But it breaks my heart to see people who love Jesus get their hair twisted by the devil. It breaks my heart. God, amen. 
But if you love him, you'll serve him and keep your mouth shut. Yeah. Watch God, baby. Trust what God's will do. Hallelujah. Because I ain't got no Holy Ghost pacifiers underneath this pulpit. That's right. Amen. Is that all right? Amen. Oh. Hallelujah. Ain't God good? All the time. Praise the Lord. Who else has a song this morning? Hallelujah. It's time for the word then. Brother, go ahead and get ready as we pray over the offering. Hallelujah. I done got it warmed up, son. Come on up. Amen. Hallelujah. services tonight but instead I'm going I'm going to preach this morning on the message that God gave me if you will remain standing this morning I have a few scriptures in Matthew 16 beginning with verse 21 when you got it you say amen From that time forth began Jesus to show unto his disciples how that he must go unto Jerusalem and suffer many things and the elders of and chief priests and scribes and be killed and be raised again on the third day. John chapter 9 beginning with verse 1 it says then Pilate therefore took Jesus and scourged him and the soldiers platted a crown of thorns and put it on his head. And they put on him a purple robe and said, Hail, King of the Jews. And they smote him with their hands. Pilate therefore went forth again and said, saith unto them, Behold, I bring him forth to you, that ye may know that I find no fault in him. When the chief priests therefore and officers saw him, they cried out, saying, Crucify him, crucify him. Pilate said unto them, Take ye him, and crucify him, for I find no fault in him. The Jews answered him, We have a law, and by our law we ought, he ought to die, because he made himself the Son of God. Father, we thank you right now for another wonderful opportunity to be able to call on you, Lord God. I pray that you give me the words to speak, give me the words to... Bring out, Lord God, in this message, in this final hour that we live, Lord, knowing that you're coming back. Lord, give me the words, let my mouthpiece, let my mouth be the mouthpiece for you, Lord God. And we ask that you'll let our hearts take in this word, Lord God. And we just thank you and we praise you. And we give you all the thanks in Jesus' name. Amen. (laughs) 
It goes on to say, when Pilate, Pilate therefore heard that saying, he was he was the more afraid. Then he was more afraid, and went again into judgment. He went into the judgment hall and said, said unto Jesus, Whence art thou? Be, be? But Jesus gave him no answer. Then said Pilate unto him, Speakest thou? Not unto me knowest thou not that I have the power to crucify thee and have power to release thee. Jesus answered, Thou couldst have no power at all against me except that were given thee from above. Right. Therefore he that delivered me unto thee hath the greater sin. When Pilate therefore heard that saying, he brought Jesus forth and sat down in the judgment seat in a place that is called the pavement. And it was the preparation of the Passover in about the sixth hour. And he said unto the Jews, Behold your king. It goes on, But they cried out, Away with him, and away with him crucify him. Pilate said unto them, Shall I crucify your king? The chief priest answered, We have no king but Caesar. I'm going to skip on down and hurry up with the scriptures. And it goes on in Luke 23, verse 39. And one of the malefactors which were hanged railed, hanged railed on him, saying, If thou be Christ, save thyself and us. But the other answered, answering rebuked him, saying, Dost not thou fear God, seeing thou art in the same condemnation? And we indeed just, justly, for we receive due reward of our deeds. But this man hath done nothing amiss. And 42, and he said unto Jesus, Lord, remember me when thou comest into thy kingdom. And Jesus said unto him, Verily I say unto thee, Today shalt thou be with me in paradise. Amen. The title of my message is, There's Still Room at the Cross This right. Morning. Amen. Amen. And, and, and life, we all have an issue where we all can say we're Christians, we are saved and we're sanctified and we're full of the Holy Ghost, but at the same time we don't live it. I come out and tell you that in order to get to the cross this morning where there is still room to lay all your burdens down, there's still room to lay all the things aside spiritually this morning, there's still room at the cross. I don't mean the cross hanging behind me, I'm talking about getting up the altar, blotting out your sins, quit being a hypocrite, quit having pride in your life and being selfish all the time. Amen. My God, I feel the Holy Ghost. Amen. My God. Number one, in order to get to the cross where, we're, where we have freedom, is number one, we got to let it go. First Peter 5 and 7, it says, Casting all your cares upon him, for he careth for you. I come by to tell you, that means don't, have, don't let that burden weigh you down this morning. Don't let that problem trouble you this morning. The Bible said it clearly right there to take it to him. you got to let everything right. go out of your life so that you can get to the cross where there's still freedom and liberty. Hallelujah. Philippians 4 and 6, be careful for nothing, but in everything by prayer and supplication with thanksgiving, let your requests be made known unto God. Amen. Amen. I got one for you, James 4 and 7. My It says, Submit yourself therefore to God. Resist the devil and he will flee from you. My God, this Bible is our sword. This Bible is our shield. This Bible is our weapon. Hallelujah. When David and Goliath went to battle, he said, I come, I come to you in the name of Jesus. He didn't have no sword, but he had a slingshot and fire rocks. Somebody said, By faith, he slew the giant. By faith, he carried. I'm going to try not to preach too hard. I don't want to have a heart attack. My God, but I feel the Holy Ghost. First John 1 and 9, it says, If we confess our sins, He is faithful to ju ju and just to forgive us our sins and to cleanse us from all unrighteousness. And we all say we're Christians. Uh, we can all say we've been saved and full of the Holy Ghost. Uh, we live like the devil at the same time. Uh, we look like we're all holy on the outside. Uh, but we live like the devil Inside. We come to church on Sunday morning and play God. We play like we're saved. But when we go back home, we want to listen to some more country. We want to listen to some more rap. Hallelujah. Woo, glory to God for the Holy Ghost. We say we're, 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 we're free from sin. But at the same time, we're living in the darkness. The Bible says that all the darkness and things that you live in will come to light. 
shall not prosper. But whosoever confesseth and forsake them shall have mercy. Amen. He had mercy. Like that Jason Crab song that says, He come looking for me. He had mercy on me. We're not even worthy to be able to wake up in the morning. We're not even worthy to go to bed at night, but we did. Because the Father sent His Son to hang on the cross for us so that we can have everlasting life. There's still room at the cross this morning, but there are things that are weighing us down and we got to let it go. That's right. Hebrews 12 and 1. Wherefore, seeing we all so are compassed about with so great a cloud of witnesses, let us lay aside every weight and the sin which doth so easily beset us, and let us run with patience Amen. the race that is set before us. Number two this morning, I'm going to hurry up just a little bit, not too much. We're never alone in this situation. You may come in here and you say, well, Pastor Brandon, I, I've been a sinner all my life. I felt God many a times. I've done this, I've done that. I made mistakes, but I come by to tell you, you're never alone this morning. Because if God be for you, who can be against you? Greater is he that is in us than he that is in the world this morning. Hallelujah. Jeremiah 29 and 11, it says, for I know plans for you, uh, declares the Lord, uh, plans for welfare and not for evil, to give you a future and a hope. Uh, you may come in here lost this morning, you may come in here this morning and you're not saved, well you can leave here saved by grace, uh, because saved by grace, hallelujah, is what keeps us going, uh, His grace and His mercy, that, that, that everlasting love and joy. You say, well, I don't have any peace no more. I don't have any joy no more. My life is getting out of hand. Well, you need to go back to the drawing board and look over your life and say, well, he brought me out of this situation. He brought me out of this mess. He paid my power bill when it was about to get cut off. He paid that phone bill. Whatever the case may be, look back over your life and remember that you're never alone. Amen. That's all right, amen. Praise it. Matthew 11 and 28, come to me all who labor and are heavy, heavy laden, and I will give you rest. Amen. Amen. No matter what that is in your life, or no matter what the situation is in your life this morning, remember, he will give you rest. Amen. He'll give you peace. He'll give you joy that overflows. He'll give you rest. So much rest that you won't even know how to explain it. Hallelujah. Amen. Romans 8 and 28. And we know that for those who love God, all things work out together for good. For those who are called according to his purpose. Amen. Amen. We, 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 we tend to say, well, I know the Lord has a future for me. But we don't want to do nothing about it. That's right. Come on. Some people, some people in America, when it pastors and people who preaches, they they'll tell you they'll preach about hell, but they won't tell you how real hell is. Come on. They'll preach, uh, uh, they'll try to sugarcoat everything today and tell you that oh yeah, as soon as you get saved, you're saved. And my friend, I come by to tell you if you backslid on God, uh, it's up to you to repent and turn from your wicked ways. Uh, Second Corinthians 4, 8 and 9. We are afflicted in every way, but not crushed, perplexed, but not driven to despair, persecuted, but not forsaken, struck down, but not destroyed. Hallelujah. Right. Right. Amen. We always wonder why when we go through life, we're like, well, Lord, I prayed yesterday, but I don't feel your presence. Oh, Rabbi Shatai, the Messiah. I come by to tell you, you can pray all day long and you'll feel God's presence. But even when you don't feel His presence, He's still with you. He's never left you. He's never forsaken us. He said, I'll be with you and go with you to the very end. Hallelujah. So remember that God is always nearby. Amen. That's right. You're never alone this morning. Amen. Hallelujah. Galatians 6 and 9. 
And let us not grow weary of doings, for in due season we will reap if we do not give up. Like I preached one of the adult classes a while back on reaping the harvest, it's like plants. You've got to start the seed. Hallelujah. Yeah. If you'll get in that word and begin to grow and understand it and pray daily and come to church every chance you get, that don't mean come to church on Sunday morning and fill the house up, but not come back during the week. Hallelujah. If you have an excuse not to be in church, then go then you have an excuse. But if you don't have an excuse to be and you and you can't and you can make it, but you don't want to make it, then that's between you and God. Amen. He will never leave you, but if you don't want the help from him, then that's on you. That's right. Isaiah 41 and 10. Fear not, for I am with you. Be not dismayed, for I am your God. I will strengthen you. I will help you. And I will uphold you with my righteous hand. You're never alone this morning. Whenever you're down in that valley or on top of that mountain, God is there to pull you out. Number three, this gets tricky and I'm almost done. Not, not almost done. Keeping the faith. In order to get to the cross this morning where there's still room, we got to keep the faith. We got to keep on going. We got to keep on believing in the Word. We got to keep on trusting in the Lord. We say, we say, well, we believe in miracles, but when it comes time to pray for someone, we intend to lose our faith. Sometimes it's hallelujah. Amen. Philippians chapter 4 beginning on verse 6. Be careful for nothing but in everything by prayer and supplication with thanksgiving. Let your requests be made known unto God. you got to have that faith, that faith in order to get to the cross uh, this morning. And I, I want to use Brian for a second. This is part of my message. I'm going to just use it. But faith. you got to have faith. I was praying. He called me the other night. I was praying. Uh, not praying. But we started out talking and everything. And all of a sudden, the Holy Ghost just interrupted the whole phone conversation. And spoke to Brian. And everything that the Lord told him, the Lord and him only knew because I did not know. And after we got done, he said, well, brother, that had to have been the Lord because I, nobody knew what I've been going through. He don't want to shut you. If you keep that faith that you keep on holding on to, it'll eventually come to pass. It'll eventually work out. Hallelujah. It says, be careful for nothing. But in everything by prayer and supplication with thanksgiving, let your requests be made known unto God. You may keep on praying. You may be keep asking the Lord for something to come to pass. And you say, well, Lord, it hasn't come to pass. Yet. Then you feel like sometimes you're like, well, Lord, did you not hear my prayer? Well, guess what? Daniel prayed three times a day, and he, he said the same thing. Lord, did you not hear me? He said, I heard you from the very first time that you opened up to now. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. And the peace of God which pass all, passeth all understanding shall keep your hearts and minds through Christ. In order to get to the cross, we got to keep the faith, but sometimes we intend to fall short of the glory of God. Amen. We intend to lack from the Word. We intend to lack from our prayers, prayer life. We intend to lack from studying the Word. We intend to fall out of church because someone talked about us. We intend to fall out of church because we feel like the Lord ain't doing nothing for us. I come by to tell you, keep your faith. America's about to get shaken. America's about to get out of hand. But you got to keep your faith to get to the cross. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Glory to God. Amen. Finally, brethren, whatsoever things are true, whatsoever things are honest, whatsoever things are just, whatsoever things are pure, whatsoever things are lovely, whatsoever things are of good report, if there be any virtue, and if there be any praise, think on these things. Those things which ye have both learned and received and heard and seen in me do, and the God of peace shall be with you. Amen. Finally, my brethren, be strong in the Lord and all power in His might. Ephesians chapter 6, verses 10 and 11. Put on the whole armor of God right. that you may be able to stand against the wiles of the devil. Right. Just as Pastor right. Will was saying earlier. Amen. We got to...
We've got to be able to with, withstand the devil when he comes against us. He will come. Come on. And it's a scary thing, church. I can sit up here and say, well, there's still room for the growth, but if you don't make a choice and make the first step, then there's no, then might as well just, the message might as well just go on down the drain. How they oh, man. Man. But I, I, I watched a movie last night, me and my wife, on the remaining, and this fits in pretty good for the message. It basically shows everything that happens after the rapture. And it was scary. Just, just put it this way. I, don't, I hope I make it. We all better hope we make it. Because with all the stuff that's going to happen after the rapture, it will be scary. It will not be fun. It will be torment. Amen. And it will be troubles. Amen. Hallelujah. Amen. It's going to get out of hand. Yep. Lastly, this morning, have you said enough? Is enough to your problem. Have you said enough is enough to Satan? That I've come to take my stuff back. You stole my peace, Satan. You stole my joy. You stole my future. But I come to take it back in the name of Jesus. In order to get to the cross, you gotta tell Satan that he's gotta go to hell by himself. Enough is enough. I'm coming to take my stuff back. Hallelujah. Glory to God. Glory to God. Glory to God. Glory to God. Judges 7 and 9. And it came to pass the same night that the Lord said unto him, Arise, get thee down unto the host, for I have delivered it into thy hand. 2 Kings 7 and 3. And there were four lepers, men at entering in of the gate, and they said one to another, Why sit here until we die? Somebody say, because heaven's right around the corner. Sometimes we got to uh, not fall asleep in our life, fall asleep in our situation, not die on Christ. Heaven's right around the corner this morning. We don't have time to get down and weary. We don't have time to fall back on God now. We don't have time to fall asleep. Like I said, we don't have time to quit reading the word. Our word is our strength. Our word is our sword. Our word is what's going to supply our needs when we're down in the valley, when we're on top of the mountain, when we don't have no joy, when we don't have no peace, when we don't have the love in our hearts, we'll pick up this word and begin to read. We'll have all the answers to to all answers, all the answers for everything. Hallelujah. Romans 10 and 17, so faith comes by hearing and hearing through the word of Christ. Amen. Amen. Hebrews 4 and 12, for the word of God is quick and powerful and sharper than a two-head, two-edged sword, piercing even to the dividing asunder of soul and spirit right, and of the joints and marrow and discerner of the thoughts and intents of the heart. John 1 and 1, in the beginning was the Word, and the Word was with God. And somebody say, the Word was God. God is the creator of the universe. God is the one who controls everything that goes on in our life. Amen. So if you want to be the one, that was on the other side of Jesus on the cross and rebuked him basically. If you want to be that person or you want to be the other one that was on the other side and said when you go into paradise, remember me. Amen. It's up to us. The choice is up to us to either go to the cross where there's still room and give it to the Lord and let him take care of our burdens right. and our battles. Hallelujah. Amen. We can't live a life full of sin and think we're going to make it to heaven at the same time. the truth. And I said, they'll tell you uh, from John or Revelations or Genesis, uh, it tells you how to get saved, but they won't teach you how to get saved. Hallelujah. Amen. They won't teach you how to live right. Hallelujah. Right. This is all in this word. We can't uh, be holy and unholy at the same time. Uh, we can't live a cleansed life and an uncleansed life at 
Oh, thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Jesus. People tell you all across the world today, they tell you, they say, well, the Lord's coming back soon. Get your heart right. But most of them that tell you that, their hearts is not even right. Amen. People live a double life. That's right. And when that day comes, those that live that double life are going to be judged by the Lord. No matter what, you may think it's going to happen. It's going to happen. All these things that we preached before and before and forward, with all this stuff with ISIS, the bombings, it's all coming to pass. And if we don't get to that cross Amen. before it's too late, spiritually, we're not going to make it. We're going to be doomed to hell. Hallelujah. That's right. Amen. Amen. this morning and be honest with God. I feel the Holy Ghost. Be honest with God this morning. Bow your heads and close your eyes. And if you're that person that, that this morning that says I've done all I can do. I've said all I can say. I just need the Lord's help this morning. I can't make it without Him. I want you to be honest with yourself and with God and just slip up that hand this morning and say, I, I can't make it without Him. Number two, I just feel the Holy Ghost. If you're that person that needs a closer walk with Him this morning, just slip up your hand and be honest with God and with yourself. If you need something from God, a healing this morning, if you need deliverance this morning, if you need salvation this morning, I want you to just slip up the head and begin to walk down here by faith. And as you come, say, Lord, grant it. Hallelujah. He called of Messiah. Father, we ask you right now in the name of Jesus, Lord God. Who Rabbi Yandora Mahaya, we pray for healing right now, Father God. We pray for virtue, Lord God, and go forth. Uh, just as the woman with the issue of blood said, uh, Lord, if I can get to his garment, uh, I'll be made whole. And when that day comes, she touched your garment, Lord. You turn around and said, Who touched me? Father, by your stripes, we are healed and we believe in it. And Lord, we receive that healing this morning in your presence. In the name we pray in Jesus' name. Hallelujah. Oh, Father, we ask you right now, Lord God, open up the doors. Minister, Father God, in the name of Jesus, let healing take place. Let virtue go forth. Deliver, set free. I pray touch his wife right now in the name of Jesus, Lord God. I sense whatever that may be, Lord God. Touch her right now. Heal her and set her free. He caught him a higher in Jesus' name. Oh, glory to God. Oh, now I'll show you the little old side.
need for your answer, and I, I will give you the answer, Jesus. For I give the life, and I take the life.
Praise the Lord. Amen.